Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Mariposas, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to North America, where beautiful monarch butterflies are going to be making the perilous migration from Mexico up to Canada and back again over three seasons. Although, no one butterfly will be able to make this entire journey because this is a multi-generational trek that they are on. Butterflies will fly, they'll hatch new ones and die, and then their children will continue flying. And then their children's children will eventually, hopefully, make the round trip from Canada to Mexico. And I'm going to show you how this works today in a two-player run-through. Got the game set up, and as part of setup, we have three seasonal objectives, one of which we know. Uh, by the time spring ends, we want to have at least two butterflies north of Atlanta, and no, or at least two butterflies, period, and no butterflies south of Atlanta is what I meant. And if we can do that, if we can push hard, where is Atlanta? Right here, and get our butterflies all north of Atlanta, We'll score four points at the end of spring. Also, we'll score points if we have three butterflies, one in a yellow zone, one in an orange zone, and one in a green zone. Um, and so, and if you could do both, hey, that's eight points if I can get three butterflies in a yellow, orange, green north of Atlanta. That's what we're trying to do right now. We'll see if I pull that off because we start out here with our first generation butterflies in a, a Micho a Michoacan. Uh, sorry, I do not know how to pronounce that, but uh, down here in Mexico, and each player starts with a couple of cards drawn randomly from the deck that will determine how we can move forward. Oh, one other thing as part of setup, three other objectives were picked at random. There's six in total, and I should say there's a whole bunch of alternate spring, summer, and fall um, objective cards as well. But anyway, in addition to just trying to fly and hatch future generations and keep flying, we also want to visit, uh, what do you call them, way stations in all the various cities because we can potentially find life cycle cards there. And if we can get a full set of life cycle cards, we can unlock one of these bonuses that are ways to score points or do extra actions and stuff like that. So, never mind the fact that the life cycle cards are also worth points. So... Three life cycle bonuses randomly, three seasonal bonuses, and the 16 cities have all been randomly seeded with different way station tokens too. Alrighty, that's the setup. We're ready to go. I'm the first player. Let's fly, little butterflies. Alrighty, so I've got two cards. On my turn, I am going to play one of these cards, do what it says, and then draw a new card to replace it, and my turn is over. And the game is just that simple. And most of the cards I'm going to get are basically indicating that I can move one, two, or three butterflies, one, two, three, four, or sometimes five steps. And so, if I play this card, I can move one butterfly, four spaces, and wherever they end up, not only will I collect a flower in that zone, but I would collect an additional flower adjacent to it. If I play this card, I can move two butterflies, or one butterfly twice, which is what will happen, because at the beginning of the game, I've only got one butterfly. So I can move three steps, pick up a flower, and then three steps, pick up a flower. That is if I end in a flower field. We'll see how it goes. So, i got to play one of these cards, and... I think this one is the ideal one to play right from the get-go. So, my one first-generation butterfly is going to start flying. I can move three and then activate the space I land on, and then one. Or I can move one and then three. I'm going to move one space. Here we go. Flying north. Moving one space. And because I have landed here by moving one space, I collect one of these flower tokens. Alrighty, and this is a big set collection element of the game that'll make sense as I go. So I've hit that one. Now, I'm gonna move three more steps. And again, if I had another a butterfly, I might move them, but instead I'm just gonna keep on moving this one. One, two, three, and look at that. I got another of the exact same flower. Very, very handy indeed. Except I pulled the wrong ones. Or no, no, I, I, I landed there, I meant to land there. Oopsie, there we go. Now. I landed here, and I landed here, and I got two of the same flower. Now, there's something else that happened. Every time you move and land, you get to activate that zone. And in this case, I activated this zone and this zone and got a couple flowers. But 
This zone happens to be adjacent to a silkweed space. And what that means is, after I've moved, I can activate this. And what do we do with silkweed spaces? We hatch our next generation of butterflies. And that is what I am going to do. I'm going to get some more butterflies on the table. And, um, right, and this, having them played, is going to get discarded. So the way it works is, up here we've got a little reminder of how much you have to pay. Basically, if I uh, am hatching a second generation, which is what I'm doing right now because my first generation butterfly is hatching a second generation, I need a pair of matching flowers or any three that don't have to match. And what do you know? I have a pair. I have exactly what I need. And so I am going to hatch my first second generation and put it right here. Now, as you can see, I've got a bunch of second, third, and fourth generation butterflies over here, but I don't grab these yet. Instead, the first second gen butterfly comes from this summer objective card. I take it, as you can see, it's uh, second gen, and I place it right over here, right on top of the first one. And now, in future turns, when I've got a card like this, I could move one butterfly twice or two butterflies once, as an example. And um, also, something else is about to happen. As soon as Jin hatches her first second generation butterfly, which will be this one, it won't come from her supply, it'll come from over here, then we get to find out what our summer scoring objective is as well, so that we can be planning for it. And uh, you'll notice over here we've got some third generation butterflies. When they've all been hatched, we'll find out what our fall objective is. And the sooner we know that, the sooner we can be doing our long-term migratory planning. So anyway, that was my turn. At the end of my turn, I draw a replacement card, and this one says I can move three butterflies one space. So I can move one butterfly, move and then move and then move, or I can move, move, and move the other one, etc., etc. But my turn is over, and now it is Jen's turn. And let's take a look at the two cards she had. Oh, okay, so this is interesting. If on your turn, you have two cards that are exactly the same like this. You can live with it and play one of them. But if you're not happy about that, you can discard one or both and refill your hand so that you're not stuck with just one type of card. And in all honesty, Jen would like the same card I had, because if she could, she would do the exact same opening move to get a second butterfly out right away. I mean, this really is, in some ways, the best card you can have right from the get-go, because um, you know there's no variability to the actual layout of these flowers. These two flowers are definitely reachable to get a second generation born right away. So I think Jen... She could keep one or both. She's going to jettison both and draw two others and see if she can... Nope, she got another one. And, oh, boom. She got what she was looking for. She's going to do the same thing I did. One and then one, two. Because, um, oh, and by the way, that meant... Right, this should have been over here. Sorry. That meant this has been done. Uh, players do not block each other in this game. So we've got a whole passel of butterflies right here. And because all the second gen butterflies have been revealed, we now know that by the end of summer, we are going to be trying to chase after this. Oh, and ah, sorry, folks. I'm already cheating. You do not discard cards as you play them. You keep them over here as a reminder of what you have played over the preceding turns. So both Jen and I have played these cards. Uh, sorry about that. At the end of Jen's turn, she'll draw another card. Uh, I'm sure that's why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on, right? Because Paula would have pointed out I shouldn't have been discarding after I play a card. You don't do that in this game. You hold on to them because they're a timekeeping mechanism. But anyway, at the end of the first round, there are now four butterflies on the board. And Jen draws back up. And she's going to be able to move one of her butterflies five steps. Or, um, let's see. Wait a minute. Or this. All right. And meanwhile, I've got these options. Okay. So, that was the beginning. And, oh, I, I'm sorry. I got a little sidetracked here. We know that before spring is over, and spring is over after four rounds. We have just finished the first round. That's why we keep our cards as a reminder of what we played, so we know how much longer we have until we score. We've got three more rounds to get all our butterflies north of Atlanta if we want four points. So uh, that is important. But now we have nine rounds, or I'm sorry, eight more rounds, three for spring and then five for summer to get this done. 
which says that basically for every butterfly north of Chicago in a yellow zone is worth two points at the end of summer. Every butterfly that is on or adjacent to Winnipeg is worth three points, and every butterfly on or adjacent to Boston is worth two points. So that gives us a more long term. We know we want to get up north of Atlanta before the round is over, before spring is over, and we want to get up to Boston or Winnipeg or just north of Chicago, the Windy City, we want to be getting way up here by the end of summer. And now, this could have been a completely different card. Like, for instance, other summer cards could have been about having a full set of all types of flowers, or getting four butterflies north of Lawrence into specific spots, or hatching butterflies in a corridor between Houston and Atlanta. So there are a bunch of different ways that you could score every time you play, and these are just the summers. There's a whole bunch of fall and spring cards as well. So every time you play, there's going to be an interesting combination of these plus these bonuses. So anyway, we finished the first round, and now I think things are going to diverge a little bit. Because after we've done that ideal first move, uh, well, it's going to change up. So do I want to move three individual steps, uh, which means I'll be able to collect one, two, three flowers, potentially? Or do I want to move four steps and collect two and get further? And remember, I mean, I do want to move fast. I've got two butterflies now that i got to get north of Atlanta to score those four points. But if I go a bit slower, I can kind of spread out because there are definitely benefits to visiting these way stations in Houston and New Orleans and El Paso and Orlando and Atlanta. So what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Um, especially because, hey, there are there's, I can, there's still this milkweed here. There's one over here as well. And if I could land next to that, I could potentially birth or hatch another second gen or even potentially third generation butterflies uh, so that I can have more than move around. But hey, the more butterflies I hatch down here, the more I've got to try to get north of Atlanta. Um, although alternatively, I don't have to focus on that. I could instead just try to focus on the colors. Get one of them up here and then one in orange and one in yellow. I could maybe, instead of heading north, I could head east trying to get over to Florida to find out what's in this city, for example. So there's definitely options. So do I want to just go hard and fast and pick up a couple um, let's see. If I could move four, land next to a milkweed, and pick up two matching, that would be worth it. Like, if I, if I go one, two, three, oh, I, right, one, two, three, four, five, shoot. If I could land here, I'd pick up this and this. That means I'd be getting another pair. I'm next to milkweed. I could make another generation of butterflies. That would be pretty cool. Um, but that's five steps away. I could just kind of run around in a circle and land next to here so that I'm next to milkweed. And I could have picked up, like, so instead of four, I could go, where are you? One, two, three, four. And um, I would pick up, oh, no, it would have to be one, two, three, four. So this would be a bit silly and wasteful, kind of flying around in a circle. But I would end up here, I'd get a sunflower, and then another sunflower, because, again, this lets me pick up an adjacent one. And... At that point, I would not be next to a milkweed, so I wouldn't be able to hatch another generation. Drat. Are there any other matches next to each other? Oh, there's this one here. Yeah. So I can, I, yeah, okay, let's go for that. I'm going to play this one. I'm going to move up to four steps. After I'm done moving, I will collect a flower and an adjacent flower, and we'll see how that works. And this is the second card I am playing. I could move my first or my second gen butterfly. It's going to be my first gen butterfly because this means I'm going to be able to make a second generation butterfly, which is nice. Um, if I try to do this with my second gen butterfly, then I would need three of a kind or any four flowers to make a third gen butterfly, which of course I'm not going to have at the end of this. So I'm moving four steps. Uh, one, two, three, four, let's say. And, I mean, I have to move exactly. I can't, um, you know, kind of sh short how much movement. But I moved. I am landing here. I'm picking up one of these spiky purple flowers and an adjacent one for another spiky purple flower. And at the end of my movement, I'll spend them to spawn my next second generation butterfly. Okay, that's pretty nice. Although now I've got three butterflies I've got to get across the line, or instead get those three butterflies into the three colors to achieve this goal. Alrighty, so that was my second of four cards that I'm going to play in spring. I refill my hand, and all right, so I've got a, a double and a double, or three singles for movement. Alright, it is Jen's turn. 
and I don't know why she has four cards. I have totally lost track of what's going on. Oh yeah, these were the cards she got rid of originally. There we go. Okay. And, um, so, Jen can make a big superpower move of five steps, or she can move uh, a few singles. Let's have her do some singles. Alrighty. So, she can move her first or her second Jen. Let's move her first Jen. Let's move her... Okay, well, she's got to make a decision. She could make a move here. She could move her second gen. One. Oh, and okay, she'd end up in Houston. I was going to say, if she could get over here and then move her first gen here, this one is next to another milkweed, and she would, again, get two matching flowers, and she could spawn again or hatch again. But no, she can't quite make that, because that would require one, two, three, four total movement, which she does not have. But you know what I think Jen wants to do? Jen, Jen wants to go visit Houston. She wants to see what can she find here. So she is playing this card. She will move and pick up a flower. Does she want to move this way to get those red flowers? I think so, because then she can see there's more of them over here. So she'll pick up those. Then she will move again, ending up in Houston. And now, every time you find one of these way stations, which, by the way, the rule book goes into a fair bit of detail about, uh, it turns out, um, if you want to, this is fascinating stuff. I definitely recommend pausing and reading all this if you're interested. But, um, you know, butterfly... Uh, my, you know, monarch butterflies are in trouble because of all the urbanization, all their habitats are going away. So what people are doing is creating monarch way station in urban areas that, but that monarch butterflies can stop at. And that's what all these tokens represent. So our little second gen mutter butterfly has flown into Houston and the first player with a butterfly to visit a city rolls the die and gets a random flower. And she gets one of these, okay? Doesn't match, unfortunately, but say la vie. And then they get to flip the token and see what's in Houston. It is th um, the fourth and final stage of the green butterfly set. And what that means is, remember, I mentioned this right up front. We've got all these sets. If you can get one of all four of the green uh, life cycle cards, you will get this bonus, which says you get a victory point and... Let's see, or I'd have to look this one up. Is this the one where you get a victory point and all the stuff? Um, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, here, here it is. Uh, immediately score one point and... Uh, or no, score one point at the end of the game, but immediately get one of each flower. So you're really set up for future hatching. So, anyway. So Jen has landed here. She has gotten her first life cycle card. Each one of these cards is worth a point at the end of the game, but if Jen can get all four of them, she'll get another point and a whole big surplus of flowers to help her breed quicker. All right, so that was one step, two steps, and now Jen could take a third step and come over here, so she's almost over to New Orleans, and now that Jen's got one green, she wants to find the other three greens, but they could be anywhere on this board amongst any of the 15 other cities, so that's going to be tough to pull off. So she has one more move. Is she going to do that? Or is she going to let her first Jen catch up? Now, see, what I was kind of hoping is when we rolled the die, if Jen could have gotten lucky and gotten another one of these uh, reds, could we, you know, which she could have, she had a 33% chance because there's one of each of the flowers. And then there's also this pick a flower of your choice. So if Jen had rolled that or that, she would have had a pair. And then this other could have just moved one. Although actually... Hold on a second. The other one can still move. Um, because Jen has one more move. She'll just go like this and pick up another one. And hey, Jen now has a pair. So, and this was her first Jen, so she can make her second Jen grow there if she wants. But if she does that, that means she's got three butterflies to get north of Atlanta. Does she want to do that? Or does she want to save up? Because uh, does she want to focus on another second gen butterfly? Or, um, you know, with any three tokens, she could make a third generation butterfly off of her second gen. Even though she could hatch another butterfly right now, I don't think she's going to do it. Because she wants to be able to ensure with all, I mean, you have to get, you have to have at least two butterflies before spring is over. And all of them have to be north of the line. By keeping two, Jen has a better shot of achieving this. So she's going to go for that. She'll just save her flowers for later. All right, so her turn is over. She draws another card. All right, back to me. Back to my turn. And this is my third. And I've got three butterflies. i got to move it, move it. And let's see here. So I could use this 2-2. Two, two, and that means I could get both of these north of the line. And then I've got this one way back. 
and he can move one, 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 I might not make it, folks. So I think maybe what I need to do is start thinking about if I can't get all three of these across the line, I better try to get all three of them into these three colors. So uh, for this, I mean, my lagger now needs four. One, two, three, or actually it's three or four will get them into yellow. Or actually, how many do I need per? I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need nine total movement, nine total steps to get all three of these north of Atlanta. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's likely I'll be able to get the other one done because I'm going to draw another card. So I can get them all across the line. Well, if that's the case, then let's try to actually achieve both of these. Let's get them across the line and also in the right colors. So how would I do that? Or can I do that? Uh, and, you know, and here's where the depth of the game comes in because there's a lot of potential planning. Uh, and, you know, and I could be focusing less on this and trying to focus more on getting a really big summer score uh, if I wanted to. Or I could be ignoring all of these and just trying to hit more cities and get bonuses out of there as a potential. Um, or I could forget about score and just try to get more butterflies because there are several ways to score points in this game. The objectives, which obviously I've been focusing on right now. Uh, to a lesser extent, the uh, life cycle cards. And also, by the end of fall, every fourth generation butterfly that has made it back south of the border, back to uh, Michoacan, is worth progressively more and more points. One level four butterfly, three points. Four level four butterfly... Four fourth generation butterflies, 17 points. Six fourth generation butterflies, 24 points. So I could be all about just trying to get my butterflies flying around, hatching, creating those later generations, and then getting them all back south of the border. And that could be the lion's share of my points. Although if that was all I did, I would probably lose because I would just get 24 points and I needed other points. I needed points for the objectives and other stuff as well. So... Uh, there's a lot to focus on, and I've got to decide what to do. You know what? I just don't know that I could pull off, because I don't know what card I'm going to draw. So that's a bit of a gamble that I would get a card that would allow me to split up movement such that I could get them all into both positions. So I think right now, I'm just going to try... I'm going to play um, this uh, double mover and get my lagger moving. So, hey, second gen, you need to act like a first gen. Come on, let's go. One, two. And uh, stop and get a, one of these purple flowers. And then go again. One, two, and get a sunflower. Okay. So, there we go. And now, just needs one more step. So, I just need one, two, three, which I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm confident I'll be able to get all three of these north of Atlanta to score the four points. All right. So, we are just flying as fast as we can. And I draw. And, ah, okay. See, now I'm bummed. If I'd known this was coming and I knew I could get the lagger up uh, north, then I could have focused the other ones. Oh, well, couldn't know for sure. Uh, this is a very tactical game based on what the cards give you. So anyway, so that was my third move, and all I did was uh, move up and get some butterflies. And now it's Jen's turn. And Jen's got to be thinking about this too. Wow. Okay, Jen has two matching cards. If she doesn't like it, she can jettison one or both of them to try to get something else. Although Jen only has two. With these two, she could guarantee get both of them way, way north. Because uh, it's five. One, two, three, four, five. And she could be starting to set herself up to get north of Chicago as well with just her two. That's interesting. But then, is she leaving uh, New Orleans behind? Does she jettison one or both of these to have a bit more flexibility? Also, could she... That's interesting. Yeah, okay. If she plays this as her third card... And gets her second gen uh, moving five steps, right? One, two, three, four, five, let's say. So a, a little bit of a back step. But by landing here, we get another of these. So that's three matching ones, three of these. And because she ended up next to Silkweed, she can um, spend three of a kind to hatch from her second gen a third generation butterfly. So look at that. So Jen is, uh, she is, you know, definitely, and, and, you know, and these are just a hop, skip, and a jump north. Although, is she going to be able to, right, because he's got this other card. You know what? Okay, with this in mind, knowing that she was going to go for that, I think um, before she played, she jettisoned one of them so she'd have a bit more flexibility. Oh, and this is definitely flexibility. And then she played this to make that move. And now, and what did she, and she, uh, Hatched another. 
And now she's got this. Okay. Now, there are two of these types of cards in the game. Reusing a previous action you have played or previous action that another player has played. So this card is basically a duplicate of any of these. These are very powerful once you've played a bunch of cards. At the beginning of a, of a season, when you haven't played any, they're terrible. Um, so anyway, so that was Jen's move. And she's got one more action to either get them into the four colors, or get them into the three colors, or get them all north of the border. And I think, how is she going to do that? So she has this. Ugh. Right, so she can move one, and then this one, two, three. Oh, no! I think maybe Jen jumped the gun a little bit, and she might not be able to do either of the objectives. And throwing away a lot of points here. Because she's only got one more card to play. And because she's created this, it's going to be tough to get all three of them north. So this just has to move one, because, hey, then she's in a yellow. And then this has to move one, two, three, four to get to an orange. Oh, I planned very poorly on Jen's behalf, folks. Oh, that might spell her doom. But, say lovey. All right, let's move on. It's my turn. I'm just trying to get them all north of Atlanta. So let's play this. It lets me move several. This is my fourth card I'm going to play. And, um, oh, I have failed miserably as well. And so this is the danger. We both fell prey to the siren song of hatching more butterflies. And so, with an objective that demonstrably did not want us to do that. If I play, right, so I can, I can move. I need to get one of these all the way over here to orange. I can't do it. Oh my gosh. And I've got this multi-use. Oh, I have chosen poorly. Oh, wait, oh, wait. No, 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 no. It's just they can't be south. They don't have to be north of Atlanta. I misread this. You can see the line shows where they have to be. They have to be south of this line. So that I just have... Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do it. I am going to um, spend my three movement. I'll move this second gen over here and get one of these little guys. I'll move this first gen over here. What the heck? Let's get a variety of different types of flowers and get one of these. And then I've got one more. And so they've all made it. I'm going to score the four points. And now, um, let's move this one over here and visit Amarillo. Amarillo, Texas. See what random flower we get? A flower of our choosing. Very nice. Let's go on ahead and get a duplicate of... Um, or I can get one... Uh, so I've got one of each type. Yeah, what the heck? Let's just get one of each. So I've got a little bit of everything. Now, I really I do want to try to focus on... If I head over here to Lawrence, there's that. Let's get another one of these sunflowers and try to get that sunflower over there. All right. So, and then in Amarilla, we discover it's the egg stage of the red life cycle. So that's a point for me. And if I can get the other three red cards, I will get an extra bonus turn at the end of the game. And at the end of the game, when you're desperately trying to get fourth gens back across the border, an extra turn could be everything. So that's, that is nice. But again... Only, there are 14 other cities out there. Three of them have the locations, and i got to find those somehow before time runs out. So, that was it. That was my last card, and I got some flowers. I crossed every line, and now it's Jen's turn, and I think I have done very poorly for her. Oh, wait, no, I haven't. Again, because I was thinking they had to be north of Atlanta. They don't. So, Jen will... Is she going to copy a previous one? Yeah. Rather than doing... Or, let's see... So if she copies, she could go for another big five mover. One, two, three, four. It'd be nice to end up in a city. One, two, three, four, five. She can't quite reach Atlanta. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, she can reach Lawrence. Okay. Jen is going to reuse a previous card she's played. She's using that one to move five. One, two, three, four, five. And she's made it to Lawrence. And all of her butterflies have made it north of the Atlanta line. Okay, I was scared there for a second. Jen rolls, gets a random flower. It is one of those purple spiky ones. And she finds in Lawrence the second stage. Oh, Jen is getting closer to a complete life cycle. All righty. So there's just two more of them out there for Jen to find. And of course, now I know where those are too. And, you know, I could potentially try, you know, Jen's done the work, which is why she gets the bonus of an extra flower, but I could try to collect those sets also. So that was Jen's turn. And we have both done four actions, which means if spring is over and it is time to resolve. Alrighty. Does everybody have at least two butterflies? 
Yes. Does everybody have any butterflies south of Atlanta? No. Which means um, we both get four points. All righty. So we're neck and neck. Um, but nobody got their butterflies. I mean, I've got a butterfly. No. Yeah, neither of us do. Jen's in green. I've got one in... All right. So we both failed at that. C'est la vie. Spring is over. But we're not done yet because if you look a bit more closely, you will notice that before we move on into summer, there's going to be... Uh, everybody gets to hatch one second-generation butterfly for free. We do not have to spend the flowers to do it. And then, very sadly, all of our first, all the first generation butterflies in the game will die. Because uh, like I said right up front, this is a multi-generational affair. So, um, we've both already gotten these ones. And the, here's the sad thing. I already got my second gen. I only had one other second gen butterfly and I paid to hatch it. Which was foolish, because I could have gotten it for free now. Remember, Jen had the option to. She decided not to, because she knew she would be able to do it for free later. And the nice thing is, because she pushed her first gen as far north as she could, this new second gen starts out up there. Getting her one step closer to being north of Chicago, or making it to Winnipeg for the upcoming summer objectives. So Jen um, now has four butterflies to my three, but things are going to change because the first gens, sadly, all good things must come to an end. They made a good run, and so the first generation is done. And now, these cards go away. Oh, by the way, Jen should have drawn a new card, and we're going to start the second. Oh, and I should have as well. I totally forgot to. And we're starting summer. We have five more turns, and we're just going to keep on playing like we have been. And um, we want to achieve one or more of these. Also, once I hatch two third generations and Jen hatches one third generation, we will find out what this objective is. Although if we don't, when we summer is eventually over, and after we get one third generation hatching for free, and then all the second gens die, we would flip this anyway to find out. But if at all possible, it's nice to know ahead of time what our goals are. Like say, um, hey, at the end of the game, excess flowers are worth points, which normally they aren't. And this one is saying that if um, in the final phase, the fall, which lasts for six rounds, if we hatch level fours east of Houston, they won't come out as regular level fours. They will come out as double level fours, um, which is a big deal. Normally, a level four, a level three can hatch a level four, and then a level four can hatch double level fours. And double level fours are a big deal because this is like you're moving two butterflies with one movement. And so getting a bunch of double fours back south of the border is a big point scoring opportunity. And so in this game, the sooner we know this, the sooner we can be planning to be doing hatching east of Houston in the fall so we can skip the singles and go right to the doubles. But we won't know that for a while. Not until I hatch two third generations and Jen hatches one more. So anyway, that's in our future. And we've got our new goals of getting north of Chicago, getting over to Winnipeg, or and or getting over to Boston. And as you might imagine, this is probably going to mean, since we're up this far, we are going to kind of spread and continue to multiply, continue to try to hit all the silkweed spots, get some more waypoints. Jen is especially incentivized to do it. Um, especially because, well, she doesn't know it yet, but getting all these extra flowers, hey, those could just translate directly into points at the end of the game. Because in this game, we will eventually find out that excess flowers are worth stuff. While in other games, we might have different um, end-game goals, uh, which is to say, hey, you know what? At the end of the game, uh, butterflies that are still north of Toronto are worth points. Or, uh, you know, the same type of thing, butterflies east of New Orleans, and, uh, and so on. Or uh, hatching stuff. East of Houston could be scoring points. So you never know exactly what's going to be coming. You have to be prepared for anything, for what the cards let you do and what the objectives want you to do in Mariposas. And that was just a quick little run through of a few rounds. And if you want to hear some final thoughts about what Jen and I thought about the game, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, a 4, 3, a 2, a 1.